Hi everybody, so today in my video I would like to show <coughs> uh, something that I've been uh, working with, uh, been, uh, working with uh, for a while. Uh, now it's not uh, something that I needed uh, for work or uh, even <laughs> for my hobby, it's just uh, it started as a curiosity. Um, uh, a little while ago I, uh, I was reading on uh, uh, one of the forums or blogs uh, about uh, negative resistant devices or gun diodes um, they just call diodes they're not really diodes but uh, I'll talk about this later uh, <coughs> so what is a gun diode a uh, gun diode is uh, it's a semiconductor device that was discovered somewhere sometime around uh, 1962 by uh, a gentleman by the, uh, called uh, JB gun that's a uh, 2n uh, and you know you probably notice my uh, uh, pronunciation I don't uh, always um, <coughs> clear that I say two ends this is a gun uh, diode and uh, sometimes these uh, devices they also related to uh, another uh, type of uh, semiconductors device uh, called impact ionization avalanche transit uh, transit time devices or uh, uh, impact uh, diodes uh, the gun diode, also uh, called a transfer electron device, uh, and the, the reason why is uh, is will be, will be clear, uh, hopefully from my explanation. So, what is a gun diode? A uh, gun diode is uh, it's uh, it's uh, not a PN device. So, what uh, we usually expect uh, when something is called a diode, uh, uh, we <coughs> we expect to see something like a, a, a semiconductor device uh, which is a, a P uh, has a PN junction with two uh, leads attached to it. So this is how the regular diode looks like. Uh, gun diode is, is something different. Um, there are no PN junction in a gun diode and um, it's usually made uh, from uh, uh, materials such as uh, gallium uh, arsenide or uh, gallium nitrate. Uh, those are semiconductor materials, and uh, it has a structure uh, which I illustrated here. Well, looking around uh, for a good description of what gun diode is, I looked in different books, I looked on internet, uh, multiple papers. Uh, um, from uh, different universities and there is not a real good few sentence explanation of what gun, gun diode is and many of those descriptions uh, even from uh, uh, very uh, uh, very credible sources are kind of different and I'm not exactly sure if they're all correct but here's here's what uh, I've learned about uh, uh, gun diodes uh, um, on myself and I would like to share it so <coughs> so this this is the device that has a following structure uh, it's uh, it has a, uh, a gallium arsenide that's uh, used as a substrate uh, which is n plus uh, semiconductor uh, material it follows uh, on top of that uh, there is a, a, a called a, a buffer layer which is the n uh, layer also made from gallium, gallium arsenide and uh, of course there, there, there are multiple different I believe there are multiple different designs of this uh, multiple different uh, variations of, uh, of these devices well here's the one I found most common uh, from multiple descriptions and this buffer layer has a, a, a certain thickness about uh, uh, 10 micrometers uh, let's say for example for 10 gigahertz frequency and I will explain why is this uh, this is important later and it goes uh, on top of that there is another uh, n minus level uh, layer of uh, uh, gallium arsenide or gallium nitride uh, semiconductor uh, material and it goes uh, usually uh, gold plated and we have uh, two leads uh, this top layer is usually called an anode and always almost always called an anode and the bottom is called a cathode uh, so since there are no, no pn junction in this uh, it's not clear to me uh, exactly why uh, this uh, this 
uh, these ports are called exactly cathode and anode maybe it's not 100% correct but nevertheless and the symbol of the gun diode in um, schematics usually is shown as a diode uh, there are several parameters uh, of the uh, of the gun diode uh, devices that are important uh, which is the frequency of oscillation and the threshold voltage well here I have a current to voltage uh, characteristics of the gun diode and uh, as you can see from these characteristics is that with increase in voltage uh, voltage goes up this way uh, so for example this would be somewhere, uh, somewhere around 8.5 volts and uh, uh, in this case I believe this uh, would be 0 0.228 ampere or something like that well I, I am uh, placing these values uh, based on the gun diode uh, that I have um, <coughs> I'll show it uh, a little bit later and uh, once the threshold voltage has been reached uh, this uh, 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 the material uh, this this uh, this layers right here uh, changes its resistance so the the electrons in this layer uh, become uh, slower and that's uh, it's it's uh, reduces the resistance uh, all of a sudden so if in uh, a regular conductor such as metal copper aluminum with increase in voltage uh, car current is also increases uh, linearly uh, in a, a semiconductor a device like this uh, with increase in voltage current uh, uh, start to decrease as soon as certain threshold has been reached and then uh, that's why this effect is called a negative resistance um, now I notice here that the gun diodes also generate lots of heat uh, when they operate because uh, they, they when they operate the resistance always uh, stays in the range of I believe uh, around uh, 20 ohms or so and uh, the negative resistance jump in this case uh, usually vary in a range of minus 5 uh, to minus uh, 20 ohm uh, so what happens when um, uh, the, the threshold voltage is, is reached uh, let's say if we apply uh, if we forward bias this diode uh, at uh, 0 0.5 volt what will happen what will happen is there st the, there will be a layer of uh, a lower uh, electron uh, mobility uh, forming at uh, the anode uh, and that layer uh, will be uh, traveling like this uh, and as soon as it reaches the other side which is a cathode another layer will form on top of it and it will start traveling so well that creates um, <coughs> an oscillations and um, because of this uh, uh, effect uh, depending on, uh, on, uh, on, on, on the thickness of the buffer layer uh, this um, oscillations can uh, range from uh, usually I'm saying usually I guess uh, you can you can uh, you can uh, develop uh, gun diode devices of different frequencies but usually they range in, f uh, in the, they, they go in a range from uh, five um, I've seen gun diodes that operate uh, five gigahertz uh, ten gigahertz uh, and up to a um, uh, terahertz range so um, although these devices were invented in 1962 and uh, uh, at that time they were uh, frequently used for uh, in uh, gun uh, devices called gun plexers or gun oscillators which I will show later and uh, they, they which operated in a range of 10 5 gigahertz 
these ones were slowly pushed out by um, other uh, uh, cheaper or more stable devices uh, that use a dial dielectric oscillator inside and patch antennas and so on uh, well it, uh, this time right now uh, the gun diodes are still uh, actively used in oscillators at very high frequency ranges in uh, let's say 70 gigahertz uh, 90 gigahertz uh, 1 terahertz and so on so um it was <laughs> it was not that easy to to find uh, a gun diode uh, to purchase online uh, i mean there there are some companies that still sell them uh, and still make them like i said uh, for special applications uh, for replacements and so on and I will b I believe they will have an application in uh, in uh, in future, uh, but uh, uh, they turn out to be not that easy to find. So I get some um, some samples from uh, NOS or uh, shall we call it new old stock. I think this one uh, was shipped to me from. Uh, uh, Bulgaria uh, somewhere in Europe and uh, originally this one these were made um, uh, for uh, uh, some uh, military applications in uh, in Soviet Union um, actually I don't think uh, these are very static sensitive, but nevertheless, I only have two, so I don't want <laughs> I don't want to zap it um, and destroy it. So I, I I'm wearing the static belt. Um, <coughs> so here is here is the device, and uh, if you look uh, on uh, Wikipedia, actually, you will find the the picture of exactly same. These ones are sold for about ten uh, twenty dollars uh, um, online and uh, again this is this is the old uh, devices uh, made in 70s um, in Soviet Union uh, this particular um, uh, gun diode uh, um, I had to uh, print copy and print the data sheet that I found uh, on on, uh, on, uh, on eBay itself so uh, well, actually, this is not a gun diode. <laughs> they look same. This is a gun diode. <laughs> um, this one is a gun diode. So I, uh, I don't have this, this open. So. Okay, coming out. Coming out. Okay, there we go. Uh. They come in these uh, plastic bags. Uh, here's the here's the diode. I'm um, quite. Uh, I want to make sure that uh, my camera can focus on it. But it's very focus. Yes, it looks like this and this. A pink uh, ceramic package, and um, I was. Uh, <coughs> so. Since um, I purchased it from a. Uh, from an old stock. This one is. Um, uh, I had to print the data sheets uh, for my later references. So, so this one is uh, is designed for frequency. It's called yes. This is this is a USSR 3A703B military gun. Uh, yes, uh, gun diode. Well, it's not military. Uh, it's just they just you know make it sound cool. <laughs> um, this is a, a pure. Uh, a PR or advertisement, uh, but this one is is operating in frequency uh, designed for frequency range from 8.24 uh, 
uh, to 12.5 uh, gigahertz and uh, the operating current maximum is uh, 350 uh, milliamp inductance is uh, 1.7 nano henry and the uh, diode resistance is 320 ohms and uh, nominal voltage 9 volts and output power 46 uh, milliwatts um, well <coughs> what it really means is that um, now let me so if I this like I said this is this is a diode but it does not behave as a diode and uh, uh, see here I will explain why so if I uh, um, um, use a uh, diode uh, testing function on my uh, multimeter and uh, it uh, has a one milliamp uh, current in this diode shows no voltage drop at this same voltage drop which is about zero zero uh, 100 millivolts in every any direction so if I um, uh, switch to uh, ohms and I check its resistance what I'm going to see oops hard to uh, I should have used uh, different leads but anyway I have in uh, this direction and if I reverse it it shows exactly same 7 ohm resistance in uh, in reverse direction so uh, if you say which one is a cathode, which one is anode, uh, this is this this uh, this uh, diode. Uh, if you if you if you get one of this and you try to test it as a diode, uh, you should expect a completely different um, different behavior. It's not like uh, you would expect from any other diode. So the the only application. Um, one of applications and basically the only application for gun diode I know about is in uh, um, oscillators or gun diode oscillators uh, usually they call the uh, gun plexers um, and uh, here here is the here's the, the the little drawing that I have that shows how uh, gun diode oscillators usually built uh, well, this is just the one version, and there are multiple versions. Uh, some use uh, uh, different cavities. Sometimes uh, gun diode is paired up with uh, um, uh, another diode, uh, that uh, uh, varactor diode or uh, variable uh <coughs> capacitance diode that's used to control its frequency by applying external voltage so that you can uh, control this uh, uh, the, the frequency at which it oscillates electronically <coughs> well this design is in, uh, based entirely on a, um, a geometric uh, uh, dimensions of a cavity uh, inside the gun gunplexer and um, uh, so this is the this is usually implemented in for in uh, from the solid or uh, from a block of uh, aluminum or uh, a brass or other material, and uh, inside this uh, material there there is a um, there is a cavity in which a, di a gun diode is placed. Uh, this cavity usually, again, also have uh, the size, which is uh, uh, matching the size of uh, uh, the uh, waveguide 
uh, designed for the frequency range at which this uh, this gun uh, gun plexers will operate. So, uh, for example, for uh, the frequency range from 8.5 to 12 gigahertz. Uh, the standard size of waveguide is WR90, uh, which is something like 10.5 uh, multiplied by 22.8 uh, uh, millimeter size. Um, and then here I have, I've shown a, uh, uh, an outline of a horn antenna uh, that can be used. Uh, uh, as a, as a, as an as an antenna for for this uh, gun plexer, so the signal will be sent in this uh, sending in this direction. Um, the bias of 8.5 to 9 volts uh, is supplied through for a low pass filter or choke, and this is somewhat similar to what's uh, used for um, uh, regular. Um, uh, power amplifiers and uh, that uh, is implemented in uh, uh, on based on top of uh, uh, RF frequency MOSFETs and and so on. So the the load pass filters is required in order to uh, stop the 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 microwave frequency from propagating back into the power supply line, uh, and then. Um, uh, this is designed uh, as, uh, as a low pass filter or RF choke and uh, this RF choke is the, the, the ability of it to work as, 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 a, as a low pass filter is based on enti entirely on the geometry of the, of, the, um, of the lead that's pushing on, on, the on the diode in this case. And uh, the anode is is is, uh, is at the ground. Uh, you can see here there will be another screw that's uh, inserted here. But it, this is this is this one is touching uh, the body of the the oscillator. So this will be at the ground. And this is not this is insulated and usually uh, it's placed inside uh, a tube, plastic tube. Uh, in my case, I use. Uh, um, uh, the tube made out of uh, PTFE or um, uh, a Teflon material. Uh, I've seen some designs where they use uh, mica uh, material, uh, uh, which is a naturally occurring uh, dielectric material. Uh, you can use other ones, and but uh, when you the the permeability of this material that's placed around the choke is different so you have to calculate the dimensions of the choke and especially this uh, wide area and narrow areas based on the permeability uh, of uh, the surrounding um, media such as in this case here will be air and this will be uh, the Teflon and this will be air again uh, and that's need to be taken into consideration. So, if the if the if the if the isolator is changed, you have to change the dimensions of the of the um, uh, of the, the choke, and just just to to say that it's a little bit more complicated. So, uh, electric er electrically, uh, this is this is uh, a very primitive device. So you can see. Uh, if I draw this uh, uh, like that, this is will be uh, the since this is a low pass filter. I draw as a, as a, as, a, uh, as a square, and then there will be a diode, and then there is a ground, and then as well we will supply a nine volt uh, bias right here, and there is a capacitor to the ground as well. So this is the schematics of entire oscillator. So most of the work in in the in designing this um, this oscillator and setting it to a specific frequency goes it's it's a mechanical engineering, it's not electrical <laughs> engineering. So that's why uh, most of the microwave um, I design also uh, involve both mechanical engineering or electrical engineering. I myself uh, have a 
uh, an electrical engineering degree so uh, it was quite interesting for me to build something <laughs> mechanically uh, uh <coughs> and that was one of the joys of, of building this device um, so like I said the the cavity in this um, uh, it, this is what uh, 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 defines the frequency at this uh, in this design at which uh, this uh, uh, oscillator will uh, operate and uh, uh, there are several uh, methods uh, to adjust the frequency that or tune it for for tuning the frequency at which oscillate one of the ways is to uh, put a screw inside uh, so that would uh, change the dimensions uh, of the cavity and uh, that sc uh, screw when it protrudes uh, through uh, the wall of the uh, of the oscillator into the cavity itself it will change its size uh, dimensions and uh, change the, the frequency another way is to use um, as uh, uh, some mechanism uh, uh, to change the dimensions of frequency by a uh, sliding back wall is that uh, this is the one I used uh, so this is if this is uh, uh, it's uh, it can be sliding in and out this was just easier for me to manufacture so, so I use a, a, a mill uh, and I, I milled uh, the, the, the cavity uh, right through so this this will this was easier for me to do and sometimes uh, both mechanisms are used um, I've seen designs in some books uh, where this is also supplied by resonating cavity uh, in form of, uh, of a cylinder that's placed like right here. Uh, obviously uh, the dimensions that I'm trying to show are wrong, but um <coughs> uh, in front of, uh, of this cavity uh, usually for uh, impedance matching with uh, the uh, horn antenna um, we have an iris what is iris uh, so this is iris is just uh, um, it's implemented as a simple plate uh, made out of brass or aluminum uh, uh, that's screwed on the front and um, so if you say if I'm looking uh, from the front point of view into the into the waveguide the iris will be uh, so in in waveguide terms uh, round hole inside uh, or iris um, in a plate that attached uh, uh, perpendicularly to the to the waveguide uh, main uh, main axis is going to be uh, a, a, this is a capacitor um, if you uh, if you have something like this, which is a slit, which is another type of virus, uh, that will be an inductor. Uh, that's just uh, to explain. I don't want to explain it uh, anywhere anywhere far further because there's lots of formulas <coughs> involved and. Uh, it's going to be outside of this uh, uh, video, I believe. So <coughs> uh, this is uh, this is the the, uh, the the simple explanations of how I have designed uh, the 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 gun plexer. So this is the device itself. So uh, here is the uh, here is the gun plexer device. I I have marked. Uh, well, I mean I. I'm not doing anything with it, so if it lays down in the box for a year, I will forget what it is and why I built it. So this is this is where I I, uh, I, I place the parameters so that if I pick it up, I know uh, what it is and how it can be used. Um, I, the black uh, uh, piece right here, uh, this is a uh, this is a uh, a piece of waveguide. Uh, we are. This is a VR90 waveguide, so I'm going to be taking it apart uh, for a piece by piece. It's not a tear down because I built it, <laughs> I'm tearing down my own things. Um, a VR90 waveguide, uh, like I said, the dimensions are uh, for this one. Um, <coughs> 
there, there, you know, you can you can look it up in any uh, a microwave uh, a book. It's uh, 10 millimeters um, uh, high, and about 22 millimeters wide. And that's a very good. It's made out of very very light material. I kind of like it. It's uh, it's it's a cutoff from a longer wave guide. And here's the uh, the iris. That's the plate I, I was talking about. That's placed like like this. Um, and then I. Screw it on. Yeah, basically, that's, that's obviously it was like that. So it um, goes right in the center, and diameter of this also um, um, important uh, for uh, for this particular design because it's 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 meant to match uh, the horn antenna that I'm planning to attach to this one. Um, so let's take it. Uh, Further apart, uh, uh, machine discover. The reason is I'm trying to uh, protect the slider inside uh, the cavity, so this is just to protect uh, the slider because uh, so my new changes in. And the position of this slider will change the size of the cavity and it changes the, 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 the frequency dramatically. Um, you can see it in another video that I've already posted online. <coughs> when I was uh, trying to tune this uh, this gun oscillator uh, uh, by uh, moving this, uh, this slider uh, like this. So if I, uh, I loosen the, the, the set screw, inside i can i can uh, move it in and out like this and that's i'm changing the this uh, the cavity and then if i uh, tighten it up it's uh, so i'm going to uh, remove this now i'm going to uh, remove the top of of, of this uh, oscillator so that you can see all the remaining parts of it have better and solder it so I have to remove it all together <coughs> so this is the, the the ground lead it's attached to the body uh, of the oscillator oops and here's the gun diode which jumped out uh, from there um, and uh, this gun diode it um, pushes this is this is the choke uh, and it goes right uh, into so I have a, a, a small hole uh, matches the, the top of it it's a little bit loose so I don't want to stress it uh, that's why I made uh, this hole a little bit bigger and you can see uh, this is the the choke uh, assembly that's uh, that's been uh, covered in uh, the plastic Taking this apart, as you can see, this is this is the design of the choke. I forgot about this uh, a second plastic part that I placed uh, on, on top for insulation um, that uh, looks out, and then don't want to solder it, but I should have probably. And then you can see the design of this uh, of this choke is um <coughs> uh, this is uh, uh, made. Uh, it's machined. Uh, turned on the lace from uh, it's made out of brass and uh, <coughs> uh, this uh, this these dimensions are not uh, <coughs> and not uh, uh, focus I'm not sure why is it not focusing
Uh, so these dimensions are not uh, are not random. Uh, this one is about nine millimeters. This uh, 3.4 millimeters, and the widths of this are about four millimeters each. So these ones were calculated to uh, 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 to work as a, a, a low uh, pass filter uh, and. Uh, <coughs> during uh, doing my calculations, I also uh, considered uh, the the permeability of the materials uh, which I used uh, in this case. And then, if you can see, the material around this will be an air, and so the permeability of air is also was used for. So, if I put it uh, back together, <coughs> and that's how it's uh, it's going to look like assembled, and it goes into into the um, from the top and pushes on a, on a diode so this is this is the assembly that I have in this case um, if you look at the cavity there is nothing interesting in, uh, in the cavity itself So, um, <coughs> so this cavity is is made uh, to match the dimensions of uh, VR90 um, waveguide, and it has some some gunk in there. Uh, which, um, I believe it's better be clean <laughs> uh, in order to work properly. And um, here is the the. The screw that um, is used in order to so the gun diode inside the cavity is uh, placed like this, and it's pushed on top by uh, by the the choke. <coughs> and uh, well, you can see there's there isn't there isn't much uh, there's any magic in this. Uh, this is a very simple. Uh, almost primitive uh, uh, device uh, construction that uh, uh, that is used uh, to generate um, uh, to, uh, <coughs> a frequency uh, in X band uh, around uh, 10 gigahertz. Here we go. I've connected my um <coughs> uh, gun diode uh, oscillator, a uh, gun plexer. Uh, to a power supply and it's currently drawing about uh, 240 milliamps and it's warming up in the case that it is working and um, um, <coughs> here I have uh, uh, an adapter uh, I've shown uh, uh, my setup that I use in order to measure the frequency generated by this uh, gun plexer, which is a 10 gigahertz, on my <coughs> uh, spectrum analyzer that goes only 6 gigahertz. So for this uh, for this uh, this reason, uh, I'm using uh, uh, an external mixer. Uh, I'm not uh, sure if you can. Uh, can see it on the on the video, uh, all of it. So so uh, here is an external mixer that I use uh, <coughs> uh, together with this uh, waveguide to coax adapter. And then um, uh, let's take a look at uh, at the signal uh, that's coming from it uh, on the spectrum analyzer. Uh, as as I shown in my other video, I'm using an uh, external uh, a double bounced mixer in order to um, uh, look at the signal generated by uh, this gun plexer on my spectrum analyzer that only goes to six uh, to up to about six gigahertz. So <coughs> here, what I'm looking here is is a uh, mixing product uh, from the 
uh, the IF output of of the external uh, mixer, and um, <coughs> so it's not going to be at uh, 10 gigahertz. Uh, instead, it's going to show uh, the mixing product, which is going to be at around uh, three. Uh, uh, local oscillator frequencies uh, which are 2.86 gigahertz uh, minus uh, RF uh, which is somewhere uh, results in somewhere around 1.94 1.8 uh, gigahertz so let me if I go here and then I go to the next peak and then I center on that frequency and I change the span to 10 megahertz and let me repeat the procedure and then uh, so I can uh, uh, narrow the bandwidth of the signal peak well instead of just um, a max peak okay so <coughs> Here I have uh, a frequency at uh, nine, uh, one point ninety three uh, seven um, gigahertz. Well, that corresponds to something about uh, ten, uh, ten point uh, forty five uh, gigahertz uh, that's generated by my um, uh, gun plexer. And what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to change the, the frequency span to 5 uh, megahertz. Uh, so that, uh, and I'm going to change the, uh, not sure how, yes, so I think this is a, this is a pretty clear um, uh, signal right here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, um, unscrew the oh. back of my gun flexor. And then um <coughs> So then I can use. I'm losing. Uh, I'm gonna loosen the uh, the set screw that I have, so I can uh, start moving the the metal block inside the cavity uh, and change the size of the cavity by <coughs> moving the back wall, um, making the uh, cavity bigger or smaller, and you can see uh, how. Uh, I can change the frequency that's generated by my gun plexer easily by changing, uh, moving the back wall. So as as uh, as long as I move the back wall, it changes the the the, the oscillating or na natural uh, uh, central frequency of the cavity, and uh, that's how I can uh, attune uh, my. Uh, uh, gun oscillator uh, to the frequency that I need so um, you also see that with the change of uh, when I change this the the uh, the size of the cavity uh, the power uh, produced by the, the gun plexer also changes see it's minus 2 dB minus 33 dB minus 34, minus 35 and when I make it really large goes to minus 38 so it's very above uh, by about 5 dB so if I don't care about the frequency this is the optimum this is this is where I got the maximum of the signal but that's not the frequency that I want Um, I found another um, <coughs> uh, a gun plexer. This is uh, in a, in some uh, junk box that I was going through uh, about uh, a few months ago, and um, 
Oh, people said, "Oh, look, uh, you you are you are building something like this, and you were interested in this. Uh, why didn't you take this uh, and see if it works or something like that?" This is old device, uh, and this is uh, this is this is uh, uh, um, uh, not uh, uh, just a, a gun plexer. It's uh, it also comes with a, a diode, uh, uh, which is the. Um, RF mixer diode that's uh, attached to to the uh, other side of uh, this cavity so it's sending signal uh, <coughs> uh, from this section down below and then everything that comes back is being uh, detected by using this uh, RF detector diode um, uh, made by NAC and these are uh, by the looks of it and I kinda uh, know this is this this looks uh, uh, 70s or uh, early 80s to me uh, I proved me wrong and this is this is how uh, uh, this one is is uh, has uh, 7048 so it could be a uh, 48 week of uh, 1970 so this is very old uh, old device as i mentioned before that this this technology was used uh, primarily in the 70s because that was the um, the most feasible uh, back then and uh, so let's see yeah, there's a gun diode which is a very small uh this unit is very small and if uh, we'll see if it if it works i didn't try to take it out yet um, so I'm going to uh, connect um, a ground lead to the body of this and uh, connect this here. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to place it upside down so that's right in front of, uh, of my coaxial adapter. And I'm going to turn on the power and slowly go to 8 volts and see if it's going to work so let's see if that old gun plexer is still working and if it's still uh, if I can still see any uh, signal coming out from it uh, here I'm using the same setup I'm using a mixer and uh, the waveguide adapter uh, uh, coax to waveguide adapter and I'm going to uh, uh <coughs> slowly uh, power this uh, gun plexer uh, using my power supply and uh, see what will come up. Okay, that was already at eight point uh, eight and a half volts. And I can see the signals coming out of it. And uh, uh, this uh, uh, gun plexer is uh, uh, using, uh, consuming about uh, 160 milliamps of power. Uh, well, I expected it to be uh, more power efficient, I guess, because it's much smaller than uh, the old uh, USSR. Um, uh, a gun diode that I've uh, I found uh, I purchased online, and uh, let's uh, let's see what it is generating. So here I am again. Uh, this is my uh, uh, the localizer frequency, and I go to the next peak, uh, 134. And if I center on that, and uh, let's do one thing. I'm going to set the span to. Five hundred megahertz, and uh, the reason I'm doing this is that uh, I'm going to see if I can tune in this um, this gun plexer uh, using the screws. So this this uh, this gun plexer doesn't have the moving back wall. It has two screws that are. Uh, um <coughs> uh, protruding into the cavity and uh, these ones are, are meant to be used uh, for a tuning of the frequency that it it's generates so if I start turning uh, one of the screw oh my god it's tight okay uh, no well wow, it's uh, it's been uh, it's been fixed by some uh, some paint 
So if I start screwing it. Okay, so what I need to do, I need to set it to auto pick. Okay, so if I start unscrewing one of these. Right, so you can see it started moving, but it doesn't move as fast. So let me change the span to, let's say, 100 megahertz. Or better, 15 megahertz. Let me change the bandwidth. So you can see when I'm moving the screw, it changes the frequency. And one thing I noticed that unlike uh, uh, <coughs> when I was moving a back wall of the cavity in, in my design, um, the power generated by the, the gun plexer actually doesn't change. So this is this, uh, uh, that's why uh, they have screws instead of uh, uh, moving back wall, I think. Is that this is much better way of uh, of changing the frequency of tuning the oscillator? It doesn't change; it stays at the same level. It's minus uh, uh, 29 dB. Well, in order to to calculate the real power that I uh, that uh, pr uh, produced by this uh, gun plexer, I have to take into consideration uh, uh, many things, and that will be complex consideration. First of all. This is the the coupling um, of my uh, the waveguide adapter, and which doesn't have an antenna, so I'm not sure about how how much loss I have there. Then goes the cable, uh, the short uh, one foot uh, RG172 uh, coax that uh, feeds into the RF input of the uh, uh, the microwave mixer. Then goes uh, the um, the mixing loss which is about f uh, 5 dBm and then um, after that goes the loss inside the, uh, the um, RG402 uh, uh, coax cable that is um, feeding into my uh, signal the, the mixer signal, IF signal into my uh, uh, spectrum analyzer so if I consider all of that uh, let's say 0 0.3, uh, 0 0.7, uh, so multiply 0 0.7 and then uh, about uh, 5 plus uh, 1, 2 uh, dB loss, so about 7, uh, 7 dB loss in, in, in cables alone, so that means that this, this, um, uh, this gun plugs are probably uh, provides about uh, minus minus 10 uh, a dBm or minus 5 I'm not quite sure about that but uh, somewhere in that range well this is all I have uh, for this video about uh, gun diodes and gun oscillators and I Hope that someone will find it uh, interesting or useful. Well, bye for now.